you know, I think it's really important that, that people pay attention to this. I mean, there's... Sanitary Commission and Montgomery County Public Schools. Each individual will have two minutes to speak. Individuals will be alerted as they approach their two minutes and may be disconnected. Also, there may be technical glitches during the public hearing that may need to be addressed by our staff, so thanks in advance for your patience. I want to personally thank the public and their staff for working with us as we work together for the best way to conduct public hearings. The council will conduct full council work sessions in April and May. And now we're asking Susan Kennedy to please begin. Thank you, Council President Katz. I'm Susan Kennedy, I'm with the Council's Communication Office, and we have six groups scheduled, or I'm sorry, four groups scheduled to speak tonight. As the Council President said, each speaker will have two minutes to give their testimony, and we will let you know when your time is up. When you are called to speak, please identify yourself, and if you're testifying on behalf of an organization, please let us know which one. We have Spanish translation available today, and at the moment we have Lilian Moss on the line, and she will provide those directions in Spanish. Para las personas que nos están escuchando, van a estar el, los testimonios están divididos en cuatro grupos, y cada va, persona va a tener un tiempo de dos minutos. Al, al finalizar sus dos minutos, si no ha terminado su testimonio, se le va a tener que interrumpir para darle espacio a las siguientes personas. Cuando les toque su momento, preséntense, digan su nombre y si están representando a una organización, déjenos saber al momento de dar su testimonio. Va a haber una intérprete que está tratando de conectarse, pero por los momentos voy a estar aquí. Thank you. Okay, we are ready to begin with Group 1, Group A, and that will include Chris Lloyd, Kate Sugarman, MD, Vanessa Peer, Monica Braden, and Antonia Serco. And so we will begin with uh, Dr. Sugarman. Okay. My name is Kate Sugarman and I live in Potomac, Maryland. I have been practicing as a family physician since 1988. I'm grateful that the county executive has put money into the budget for legal representation for immigrants facing deportation. I ask you to structure that funding so that immigrants detained by ICE can access representation. A large percentage of my patients are immigrants, many of whom have fled torture and persecution in their countries of origin. Many of my patients are seeking asylum and some have already been granted asylum. As a part of my work, I have met with patients who are in immigration detention in Maryland. I know from this experience that detained immigrants are routinely denied adequate medical and mental health care. In addition, it is far more difficult for detained immigrants to get the proper documentation in order to be able to successfully apply for and be granted asylum. As a medical doctor with extensive human rights training and experience, I know how important it is for an asylum applicant to have a doctor examine and then document evidence of torture and abuse. Medical and psychological examinations are often essential to obtaining asylum. Physicians and psychologists are only able to help a detained person if that person has a lawyer who can recruit the physician and psychologist to do these examinations and use the information in their reports to make the necessary legal arguments on the immigrant's behalf. Unfortunately, the situation for detained immigrants has now turned deadly due to COVID-19. I know from my experience in ICE detention centers that it is not possible to implement social distancing and proper hygiene, and that unless detained immigrants are released, they are at extremely high risk of contracting COVID-19 and many will die. Lawyers are necessary to petition for their release. For all of these reasons, I ask you to refrain from placing any restrictions on the funding in this year's budget allocation so that detained immigrants can access the representation they so desperately need. Kate Sugarman, MD, Family Physician, Unity Healthcare. Thank you very much. Before we move to the next speaker, would the caller with the last four digits, 5420, please identify themselves? Okay, can I exit the call now? Yes, thank you very much. All right, thank you. I have to dial the number again. Yeah, that's the name. I'll go to the you Please identify yourself, 5420.
Hello. Hello. Uh, this is the Spanish interpreter. I've been trying to communicate. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Michelle. We'll be right with you. Okay, now oh. we'll, we will move on to our next speaker. Uh, I believe Monica Braden is on the line. Señora Monica Braden. Señora Monica Braden, es oh. ¿está ahí? Yes. Sí, sí, aquí estoy. Va, está aquí ya, ella la va a puede empezar cuando guste. Yo okay, le voy a gracias. interpretar, señora, señora Mónica, yo le voy a interpretar. Uh, ¿Me escucha? Perfecto. Sí, ah, sí la favor, escucho. Diga, ok, diga unas cuantas oraciones y haga una pausa para yo poder repetir lo que usted está okay, diciendo, sí. por favor. Ok, perfecto. Okay. Sí, gracias. Ok. Muy buenas noches, honorables miembros del Congreso, del Consejo. Gracias por la oportunidad que me han dado para exponer mi testimonio. Uh, good night, members of the council. Thank you very much for the opportunity that you have given me to express myself. Quiero agradecer por todo su excelente trabajo que están realizando en apoyo para nosotros los residentes en estos tiempos de crisis por el COVID-19. I want to thank everyone for all the help and all the support you are giving us during this time with this crisis of the COVID-19 to all the residents of the county. Mi nombre es Monica Braden. Vivo en el 12208 de la Grandview Avenue, Silver Spring, Maryland, y soy parte del proyecto Cívico Latino y miembro del grupo de líderes del Distrito 4, gracias a la iniciativa de la concejal Nancy Navarro. Esto está repitiendo un poquito de detrás. I live at 12,208 in um, Silver Spring, Maryland, and I am part of the uh, Latin City Group and the uh, District Leaders for thank you to the uh, uh, Mrs. Navarro. Señora Mónica, continúe con su testimonio, por favor. Hola, señora Mónica. Susan, I think we lost her. Can we go to the next yeah. one? Yes, we can, and we will come back to her if she returns. Next, we have Antonia Cerco. La señora Antonia Cerco. Yes. Muy bien. Muy buenas noches, señor Cine Cot, eh, y a todos los miembros del Consejo del Condado. Gracias por la oportunidad que se me ha brindado para dar mi testimonio en estos tiempos de difícil situación que estamos viviendo por la, por la pandemia COVID-19. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity of giving my testimony during these difficult times in which we are passing through the uh, pandemic situation. Mi nombre es Antonia Surco. Soy residente del Distrito 4 por más de 15 años, razón que Dios y la vida me ha dado la oportunidad de trabajar por y con la comunidad latina emigrante. Uh, my name is Antonia Surco, and I'm a, a resident of District 4 for over 15 years, and I have been able to work for many years with and for the Spanish community. Actualmente, soy miembro activa del Grupo de Liderazgo en nuestro distrito como parte de la continuidad del Proyecto Cívico Latino, por lo que quisiera agradecer a la gran a nuestra concejal Nancy Navarro por esta importante iniciativa que ha sido y es muy valiosa para nuestra comunidad. 
Uh, right now, I'm a member of the Civic um, Leadership um, Latin Group, and I want to thank very much Mrs. Nancy Navarro uh, for all her help and the opportunity she has given me. El propósito de mi intervención es pedirle a ustedes que se destine un fondo para la creación de un centro de educación formal para adultos. Uh, the purpose of my uh, question is to ask for a fund that will enable a formal education center for adults. Donde principalmente el inmigrante que vive en nuestro condado pueda iniciar su proceso de empezar su educación primaria y secundaria básica formal. Where the immigrant uh, that has recently arrived to our county can start this formal uh, basic education, um, uh, primarily basic education. Acompañado con el lenguaje del inglés y programas de alfabetización. Considero que esto es de suma importancia porque somos miles y miles de seres humanos con capacidad para lograr metas que nos, que nos lleven a tener una vida digna con más equidad de oportunidad y menos desigualdad. Um, uh, together, education together with learning English because we think it is very, I think that it's very important that uh, we all have the opportunity to reach this goal and better ourselves and have a better life with equity and uh, assurances. Con la creación de un centro de educación de adultos formal, podremos brindar o tener una mejor calidad de vida para nuestros hijos dentro de la sociedad, comunidad y así seguir contribuyendo al desarrollo de esta gran nación. Uh, with the creation of a formal organization, a formal entity for education for adults, we will have a better opportunity to be more successful and be better individuals for the community and for this great nation. Nuevamente, quiero agradecer a todos aquellos que, que van a permitir que se haga una realidad este gran proyecto. Especialmente agradecemos a Nancy Navarro, una gran mujer que siempre está con la comunidad. Y esperemos que pronto estemos celebrando y que sea una realidad este proyecto. Bendiciones. We have to wrap it up with that question. Uh, uh, I very much want to thank um, everyone that is working to uh, make possible this um, goal, especially Mrs. Navarro, and uh, thank you very much and blessings. Thank you very much. Is Monica Braden back on the line? La señora Monica. Yes, I'm here. I just... Oh, señora Monica. Yes. Sí, aquí estoy. Oh, okay. Okay. Continúo. Uh, eh, mi nombre es Mónica Braden y uh, pertenezco al grupo de Proyecto Cívico Latino y miembro del grupo de líderes del Distrito 4, gracias a la iniciativa de la concejal Nancy Navarro. Yes, my name is Mónica Braden and I belong to the civil group. Um, Latin Civil Group and Leadership for Spanish People. Thank you very much. Thanks to Mrs. Navarro. Eh, soy proveedora de cuidado infantil en el hogar. I provide uh, child care at home. Y soy madre de tres hijos entre la edad de, de 18 a 15 años y el más pequeño and, eh, tiene autismo. I am a mother of three children from 18 to 15, and the youngest one is autistic. Yo he venido luchando para que existan métodos de aprendizaje para niños con estas limitantes. 
have been working very hard to try to get um, more methods to help children with these conditions. Ya que no pueden estar al nivel de los otros estudiantes. Since they, can, they cannot be at the same level as other students. Esto no quiere decir que ellos no se les pueda desarrollar otras habilidades técnicas. This doesn't mean that they cannot develop other uh, technical abilities. Manuales, donde pueden tener un gran potencial y un sinfín de destrezas. And manual act abilities where they can have an unlimited uh, potential. Que pueden ser utilizadas en su aprendizaje de algunos oficios, como carreras técnicas, como arte, pintura, dibujo, that uh, they, with these abilities can be used to develop um, things like um, painting. They can have different manual uh, positions, um, sorry, uh, things like uh, they can develop the art, paint, drawing. Mecánica automotriz, así como ojalá, ojalá quería pintura, automotriz, etcétera, etcétera. Uh, also, uh, metal work and uh, working in metals for cars, etc., and other things. Por esta razón, quisiera se incrementen los fondos para la educación con estos jóvenes con necesidades diferentes. That's what I'm asking for funds to be increased for uh, young people with different abilities. Y que hayan más programas orientados para estos jóvenes y adolescentes. And uh, to have more programs for these young people and adolescents. Así de esta forma, prepararlos para una vida más digna de adultos. This way we could prepare them for a more dignified life as, as adults. Actualmente existen programas como la escuela High School Thomas Edison de tecnología. Uh, right now there are programs in high schools like Thomas Edison Technology. Pero como es una escuela con una gran demanda. And since this school has um, is in very much in demand for many students. Piden cierto puntuaje de 2.5 como mínimo y resulta a veces difícil para algunos de ellos que puedan alcanzar este porcentaje. And it also requires uh, 2.5 uh, points has a, is a requirement for the school and many times it's difficult for them to reach these points. We need to wrap it up, please. Uh, necesitamos terminar, por favor. Sí, ok. Por tal motivo pediría fuese revisado y darles más oportunidades a estos jóvenes adolescentes que también son un grupo vulnerable y sensible y así uh, for this reason uh, I would like this uh, to be I would like these positions to be reviewed so these children and young people they are also vulnerable people can have a better chance y con su ayuda se puedan abrir más espacios y más programas. Gracias. Okay. Uh, thank, um, you. Help, can... thank you very much. Um, okay, um, muchas gracias, señora. Mr. Pell, uh, yeah, I just want to very quickly just summarize um, her point. Um, so as you probably were able to piece together through the translation, uh, she is uh, expressing her desire to for us to always think about expanding the technical education, uh, especially as we have now Edison and some up county, specifically when it relates to teenagers who may be on the spectrum, um, so that we can offer them more opportunities that would lead to jobs uh, in the future so they can be self-sufficient. I just wanted to make sure that the translation was accurate, um, and I'm having a little bit of a problem with that because even the, the former 
person that testified the translation wasn't very accurate. So I'm offering for this particular hearing for the next ones that I'll be happy to translate um, for the next, if there are any other Spanish speaking um, uh, people who have come forward to speak. I think it's important that the translation is uh, uh, accurate. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Navarro. We appreciate that. Um, next, we have Kathy Staus. We're, excuse me, we're in Group B. Kathy Staus, Pia Morrison, Kathy Googlis, Rosario Reyes, and Jenny Garcia. And we will start with Kathy Staus. Hi, good evening, Council President Katz and Council Members, and thank you for your leadership and flexibility, especially in making this new form of testimony possible. My name is Katie Staus, representing Silver Spring Justice Coalition. We're local churches, community-based organizations, and local chapters of national organizations, and formed in 2018 after Robert White, an unarmed black man, was killed by a Montgomery County officer. As I know we all recognize, and many of the council's actions have already reflected, COVID-19 has increased risks, especially for certain groups of residents that were already vulnerable. These risks could result in increased police contacts of a certain type. Since we're seeing temporary and possibly permanent business closures and job losses, loss of loved ones, school closures, and more housing instability and food insecurity, these sudden socioeconomic changes may cause increased trauma, anxiety, depression, and even suicide attempts, possible increased domestic violence, and possible increased alcohol and drug abuse. Many of these problems can best be addressed with mental health services in order to prevent escalation to the point where police are involved. These services can help save the county money by reducing costly arrests related transport, incarceration, and litigation costs, and avoiding social costs related to interrupted family life and work, linked to even brief encounters with law enforcement. A mental health emphasis is in line with SSJC's expansive view of public safety that extends well beyond policing. Given this, SSJC requests the county pursue the following cost-saving measures. De-obligate or otherwise reallocate funds previously allocated for school resource officer expansion in the past two fiscal year budgets. Fund 30 additional mental health crisis beds with adequate social distancing. Fund four new mobile crisis units aligned to new state standards to add to the current single mobile crisis unit, so there's one for each district. Increase training for police officers in identifying and responding to mental health crises and in racial bias training. Our informal discussions reveal many police don't recognize racial bias as a real concern. Those are informal discussions with officers. And fund a fiscal year 2021 exchange study of the crisis assistance helping out in the streets CAHOOTS model for mobile crisis intervention so that the model could be um, looked at in the future. And finally, we ask that the county rapidly staff the racial equity unit under the confirmed officer in this Tiffany Ward. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Next, we have Kathy Gujulis. Yes, hi, thank you. My name is Kathy Googlis and I'm testifying as an individual, 40 years living in the county and 20 years of senior level experience in budget formulation at two large federal agencies. This budget, which proposes over a 2% increase needs to be scrubbed with serious cost cutting measures put in place. Even if the coronavirus had not occurred, this budget proposal is unsustainable in the out years. Pay raises proposed for the union contracts start mid-year and are not annualized in this budget. The largest contract for the municipal and county government employees organization shows a fiscal impact in 2021 of over $14 million, but rises sharply to nearly $20 million, a 38% increase every year beyond 2021. Same goes for the firefighters and police contracts. The Montgomery County Taxpayers League analysis shows the budget proposes a 4.5 to 8.25% salary increase in 2021 on top of a 7% pay raise last year. It's unsustainable, unreasonable, and unfair. The number of county employees would increase by 1.7% in fiscal year 21, even though the population is projected to decrease by almost 1%. The council staff would get five more full-time and three part-time staff, and the executive would get two additional full-time staff. Leadership should lead by example and do more with less. Perhaps the county council could share staff resources. For example, why does each need their own newsletter? It seems redundant and inefficient. The 3.1 cent supplemental property tax increase to fund schools will do nothing to raise declining performance. It will make it harder for millennials, seniors, and others to afford homes and is the reason why so many people are leaving the county and why so many businesses refuse to locate here. Revenue from income tax in 2021 was projected to decline 1.4% from the 2020 estimate, 
even before COVID-19 hit. The state comp comptroller now projects a 20% or more decrease in income tax revenue. It's a time for the county to brace for a dramatic decline in revenues and start tightening its belt, focus on basic services to keep residents healthy and economically viable. Any other actions are responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Rosario Reyes. And I do believe she is going to need interpretation, Councilmember Navarro. Okay, thank you. Muy buenas noches. Honorables miembros del Consejo, quiero darle las gracias por la oportunidad que se me ha dado para exponer mi testimonio. Good evening, Council Mem Honorable Council Members. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to give my testimony. Quiero agradecer por todo su esfuerzo que están realizando en apoyo por nuestra comunidad latina que reside en este condado en estos tiempos difíciles por el COVID-19. Sabemos que solo unidos como gobierno y comunidad saldremos adelante. I would like to thank you for all the support that you're giving the Latino community in Montgomery County during this difficult time of COVID-19. Together, we can move forward and we can find solutions. Mi nombre es Rosario Reyes. Vivo en el 412 North Sami Avenue en Gainesville, Bumerila. Soy madre de familia de tres hijos. Estoy representando a los padres de la escuela Gaither Elementary School. My name is Rosario Reyes. I live in Gaithersburg. I am the mother of three children, and I am here representing the parents of Gaithersburg Elementary School. También miembro del proyecto cívico latino a través de las clases cívicas que se nos están ofreciendo en nuestra escuela. I also participate in the Latino Civic Project. I participate in the civic classes that are being offered in my school. Quiero darle las gracias a la concejal Navarro por esta iniciativa. Por muchos años he venido apoyando a los padres de la escuela y a los vecinos del área. I would like to thank Councilmember Navarro for launching this initiative, but for many years I've been supporting parents and my neighbors in, in, in the area where I live. Y conozco las necesidades que ellos presentan, sobre todo en el área de educación. Por esta razón, quisiera pedir en nombre de ellos y en el mío propio que se asignaran fondos para lo siguiente. And I know quite well the needs that they have, especially in the area of education, and it's in their name that I come to you to ask for funds for the following uh, areas. Que existieran más programas y actividades después de la escuela para que los niños puedan realizar sus tareas. I would like to request more after school programs so that the uh, students, the children can do their homework. Programas de cuidado de niños después que finalice la jornada escolar. Esto garantiza que algunas madres que trabajan puedan hacerlo y contribuir en el hogar. Also more uh, after school child care programs uh, especially for those moms that may be able to become family child care providers or those that work and don't have time after um, school to care for their children. También quisiéramos que se aumentara el número de terapistas en nuestra escuela y que se asignen tomando en cuenta la cantidad de estudiantes. We would also like to advocate for increased therapists in schools as well as counselors so that they don't have such a large caseload. También que se le incrementen los fondos para actividades deportivas para jóvenes porque existen, pero los cupos son limitados. Muchos jóvenes se quedan por fuera. Also increase funding to provide sports opportunities uh, and physical education for many uh, students because they do have some programs but it's not enough and many of them are not able to participate. Nuevamente, quisiera decirles muchas gracias por la oportunidad que se me ha brindado. Que Dios me les bendiga. Once again, I would like to express my gratitude to you for this opportunity. May God bless you. Thank you. Next, we have Jenny Garcia. Muy buenas noches, honorables miembros del Consejo. 
Gracias por la oportunidad que me están brindando para exponer mi testimonio. Good evening, honorable council members. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give you my testimony. En primer lugar, quisiera agradecer por su excelente trabajo, el cual están realizando en estos momentos tan difíciles para todos los residentes por la crisis del COVID-19. First, I would like to thank you for all your hard work, especially during this difficult time of COVID-19 pandemic. Mi nombre es Jenny García y vivo en el 3212 de la Whispering Spines en Silver Spring. My name is Jenny García and I live in Silver Spring. Soy una de las madres de la escuela de Georgian Forest Elementary School y miembro del proyecto cívico latino. I'm one of the moms that participates in the Georgia, uh, Georgian Forest Elementary School Latino Civic Project. Um, quiero agradecer también a la concejal Navarro por esta iniciativa. I'd like to thank Councilmember Navarro for launching this initiative. Trabajo en bienes y raíces um, hace mucho tiempo y por, mi y por mi trabajo que hago, sobre todo con la comunidad latina. I work in real estate. I've been doing this for quite a while. I work specifically with the Latino community. Me doy cuenta que aunque realmente ellos quieren obtener una vivienda, los precios y los gastos son muy altos para poder obtenerla. And I, of course, have faced the challenge that although many of them would like to be homeowners, the cost of uh, real estate and the challenges uh, around uh, being able to afford it has become a, a, a real challenge and a barrier. Por esa razón, me gustaría pedirles que se incrementen los fondos para obtener viviendas asequibles o que se designen más viviendas de interés social. This is why I would like to advocate and ask you to provide more funding in order to create more affordable housing units. Um, this is something that I would like to advocate for. Sabemos que existen programas uh, de ayuda para viviendas, pero las listas de espera realmente son muy largas y los requisitos para algunos son inalcanzables de cumplir. We know that you do have programs in place, but the long waiting lists uh, are really prohibitive and it really is a barrier for many that would like to um, own a home or would like to have access to affordable housing. Porque realmente los costos de renta en los complejos de apartamentos son muy altos y los sueños de nuestra comunidad es obtener una vivienda propia. We also know that rental, uh, rent costs are very high and uh, ultimately what our community would like is to be able to own homes. Eh, y por último, realmente quisiera pedirles que que considerara mi, mi petición. And, and finally, what I'd like to do is to please uh, ask you to consider uh, my uh, petition, my uh, request that you provide more uh, assistance for affordable housing and also create more affordable housing units. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. Que tengan buenas noches y bendiciones a todos. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Have a good evening and blessings for all. Thank you so much. We're now moving to group C, Lauren Taylor, Emily De Matasas, Griselda Ventura, Eunice Quinteros, and Rick Callahan. And we will begin with Lauren Taylor. I'm full. Uh, Good evening all. Um, as a Montgomery County resident and a resident of Silver Spring and a member of Sanctuary DMV, I urge you to approve a legal representation program without criminal carve outs so that all our immigrant neighbors have access to due process and fair representation. Sanctuary DMV was proud to be part of a coalition that one expanded funding for legal representation for detained immigrants in Washington, DC. We've seen firsthand the importance of legal representation for detained immigrants. We've seen in particular three trends, the first being financial need. The vast majority of detained immigrants in this region are indigent. Most nonprofit legal providers do not serve detained immigrants and hiring an attorney for a detained case is prohibitively expensive. Second, speed. When ICE detains someone, they usually try to deport the person very quickly, often without providing an adequate opportunity to contest the deportation. Legal representation addresses this issue by promptly assigning an attorney. 
The third trend we've seen is success. Representation works. Detained immigrants who are represented by counsel are four times more likely to win their cases and remain in the U.S. than their unrepresented peers. Many detained immigrants are eligible for legal remedies and just need an attorney to help access them. Legal representation gives people that chance. Um, Sanctuary DMV recently saw a re an example of this important service. Um, we learned of a Montgomery County resident who was detained at his ICE check-in and was nearly deported. Thanks to a group of volunteers, we were able to secure an attorney for him, prevent his deportation at the last minute, and put him on a path towards potential immigration relief. If we implement legal representation without carve-outs in Montgomery County, so many others will get the fair chance that this man receives. Finally, as someone who staffs our organization's assistance hotline, I frequently get phone calls from people whose loved ones have been detained by ICE. I cannot tell you how relieved I am that I'm able to contact the CARE Coalition and arrange for them to visit, interview, and defend the individual through our region's many universal representation programs. Sadly, Montgomery County residents who call us have been the exception to this valuable resource. We urge you to change that starting in fiscal year 2021. And finally, the stakes for people in immigrant detention could not be higher. On top of the risk of permanent separation from families and communities and the forced return to dangerous or deadly conditions in another country, they now face a rising health risk caused by irresponsible federal enforcement and a lack of federal leadership that's putting communities at risk. The we threat is real and we know. Yeah, we need you to wrap it up, please. Sure, and we urge you to support um, full legal representation without car -bets. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Emily Demetatsis. Good evening, council members. My name is Emily Demetatsis. I'm a teacher at South Lake Elementary in Montgomery Village, and I am here today representing Action in Montgomery, also known as AIM. I want to thank the county council for appropriating $6 million and direct family assistance, especially for families who do not qualify for federal assistance. Just this week, I spoke with a single mother worrying about providing for her children who lost her job and cannot apply for unemployment. Another parent fears not being able to pay rent at Cider Mill Apartments because he lost his job. Brady Management and HROC are asking him for proof that he is a subcontractor and have they have sent him an eviction notice. A third family had been planning to move, but because of COVID-19, they cannot and they cannot. And now Grady and HOC are charging them higher rent if they decide to stay. This is bureaucratic red tape that makes good policy inaccessible and inequitable. This is also management companies taking advantage when people are hurting. As a teacher, I see that my kids can't focus on distant learning if they don't know if they will be able to sleep in their beds next month. While some effects of COVID-19 are felt by all, the effects disproportionately hurt black and brown people more, my kids and their families, and will continue to linger and the effects will continue to linger for the foreseeable future. Although the federal stimulus money will help many, there will be tens of thousands of residents, my kids and their families, who are left behind and will not qualify for these benefits. County council members, when will the funds for direct family assistance become available? I ask that the county work with organizations like Action in Montgomery, Title I schools, based institutions, and others who are on the ground with teams ready to help connect our most vulnerable family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Griselda Ventura. Hello. Hello. Hello, hi everyone. Good afternoon. Honorable members of the Montgomery County Council. My name is Griselda Ventura. I live in Olney and I am the mother of three daughters. I am also part of the civic of the Latino Civic Project and I'm participant of the District Board Leadership Group. I want to thank you, Mrs. Navarro, for promoting this project that has helped me as a person, as a as a professional. 
tonight I want to take the time to ask you, all of you council members, to please incre increase more funds for special education, both for children and adults, especially for the LFI program, since very few schools in Montgomery County has this program. That has helped me um, because I also have a kid with a special need. She has Down syndrome and I had like a really difficult time finding a place for her to attend um, LFI program. Now, thanks God, she is in um, Stonegate Elementary School because of the address. But before she went to um, Silver Spring, which was really far, uh, Woodling, I think it is. Okay, <laughs> sorry that I'm nervous. Um, but then I also want to, I want you to continue the developing leadership of women as has been done in District 4. I believe that we as women, we can make a positive change in our family, community and county. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. Um, also, finally, I want to thank all of you for the effort that you are making to keep all residents informed and safe, providing support for the most needy communities. In the face of the situation that we are experiencing by COVID-19, also, as you know, there are many needs in our county, and I would like to advocate for the previous two um, testimonies for Mrs. Taylor and Ms. Demacatis, because uh, there are a lot of needs in the county for the Latino community and all communities as well. Thank you so much. I think you are doing a great job. I never get tired of saying that Montgomery County is a great county, and that's because of the leaders, that people like you that make a better place for us to live. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you. I believe Mr. Albernaz would like to, to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to respond to the question when the $5 million direct cash family assistance will be available. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services has received final feedback on that this week, and they are taking all of that into account, and the money will begin to be released as early as the latter part of next week. And they're working directly with nonprofit providers and community-based organizations as well as faith-based organizations to ensure that the families that need these services, that need these resources, get them as quickly as possible. So I really appreciate that question. And while I have the floor, I just want to say how it warms my heart to hear so many uh, multilingual speakers this evening and really appreciate uh, them stepping forward to speak on behalf of their communities. It means so much and they're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Indeed. Okay, and we have Rick Callahan now. Specific to me, thank you for uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Rick Callahan. I'm the executive director of Compass and co-chair of Montgomery County Interact uh, members. Uh, thank you for all your support. I cannot imagine where we would be without this critical support for people with disabilities and the direct support professionals. Interact is a coalition of over 30 nonprofit organizations that provide services, connect people with their communities and advocate and with over 4,000 people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families in Montgomery County. Our organizations exist to support the full, full inclusion and belonging of people with disabilities in the places they live, work and spend their lot time in Montgomery County. We ask this committee support the county executive budget for fiscal year 2021, the DD supplement fund funds are used to recruit, hire, train, and retain member workforce of over 5,000 DSPs. I think you see every day our DSP heroes at the front lines providing life-saving, altering supports for people with disabilities and actively working with current, currently COVID-19 positive cases, individuals, and staff. The DSP workforce crisis is here. Low salaries cause high toner. High rates of vacancies equals lower quality of life for Maryland with intellectual and developmental disabilities. State average of turnover is 38%. Majority of those DSPs are for voluntary separation. When I moved to Maryland, the DSP's starting wage was more than 50% higher than the minimum wage. 
It's a way to allow me to live and shop in my local communities. I did not have to work three jobs to make ends meet. Today's CSP faces a completely different situation. The University of Maryland Institute on Community Inclusion has focused its research for the past 30 years on how skilled DSPs equate to better, safer, and healthier lives for people with disabilities. Today's direct support professional is much, than, much more than a caregiver. They keep people safe, they help them thrive in their communities. They help, they must possess critical thinking skills, sound judgment, and law, knowledge on a range of daily issues. We need, to, we need those, those resources. We need the, DS, the DD supplement to continue to offer high quality wages for our employees and to recognize everything that they do every day for the people we support. So I urge a favorable report for the county executive budget respectfully by myself, Rick Callahan, and 30 members of the Montgomery County Interact Provider. Thank you and continue to be safe. And I do, I wanna reiterate, I appreciate everything you guys do. I, I say it all the time, Montgomery County is a great place to be and all the support you provide to us is, is, is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now move to group D. We have a few people who were having te technical difficulties earlier in the evening who will be part of group D. We have Julissa Olivas, Allison Gillespie, Jean Didwitty, Nathan Ackerman, Pia Morrison, Vanessa Pierre, and we have one person who is not identified, and we will get to that person with 9008 um, after we finish with Ms. Pierre. So we will start with Julissa Olivas. Miembros del Consejo. Hello, Ms. Navarro will translate for you. Okay, thank you. Bueno, ok. Buenas noches, miembros del Consejo del Condado de Montgomery. Gracias por la oportunidad que se me ha brindado para dar mi testimonio en estos tiempos tan difíciles que estamos viviendo. Good evening, members of the County Council. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to testify during these difficult moments that uh, we are facing. Mi nombre es Julissa Olivas. Vivo en el Distrito 4. Represento al Comité Consultivo de Padres de los Programas de Linkages to Learning del Condado de Montgomery. My name is Julissa Olivas. I live in District 4 and I represent the uh, Parent Council of the Linkages to Learning Program. Agradezco al Gobierno de Montgomery County por el apoyo que brinda a este programa. I thank the Montgomery County government for the support that it offers this program. Y como muchas otras madres, he tenido una participación muy activa en la escuela elemental de Georgian Forest. And as many other moms, I have been very actively involved in the Georgian Forest school community. Soy miembro activo del proyecto cívico latino y estoy en constantes participaciones de entrenamientos de liderazgo y clases cívicas. I'm also a very active participant of the Latino uh, Civic Project, and I participate in many other workshops that teach me civic education. Lo que ha sido de gran ayuda para mí, y he podido también ayudar a otras familias. Which has been a great help to me, and also it has, it has uh, allowed me to help many other families. Muchas gracias, Concejal Navarro, por tan linda y noble iniciativa que ha tenido con todos nosotros. Thank you, Councilmember Navarro, for such a noble initiative that you have provided to all of us. Quiero manifestarles que las necesidades de las familias que participamos en este programa están basadas en las limitaciones de recursos que aún se tienen. I just want to communicate to you that many of the barriers and the needs of the families that participate in this program are directly related to the lack of opportunities that they face. Por eso quisiera pedirles que se incrementen fondos para este programa de Linkages to Learning. This is why I would like to ask you to please increase funding for Linkages to Learning. Para que las madres obtengamos becas completas y así poder recibir entrenamientos profesionales en áreas de educación temprana, computación y entre otras. Uh, also, so that uh, us moms that participate in this may be able to get some kind of subsidy or scholarship so that we can 
attend early childhood education classes or computer classes? Eh, de igual manera que se incrementen fondos para desarrollar programas de actividades recreativas para nuestros estudiantes después de sus actividades escolares. Also, I'd like to ask for increased funding for recreation activities af uh, for students uh, after school, so after school programs that have more recreation opportunities and activities. Bueno, y finalmente le pido la protección de Dios para todos ustedes. Muchísimas gracias por su atención y pasen buenas noches. And finally, I would like to ask God to protect all of you and uh, please uh, have a great evening. Gracias. Thank you very much. Allison Gillespie. Sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry for that. Good That's evening. Um, I am here once again, as I often do come to ask you all to please make sure there's adequate funding in the budget for parks. I have come so many times in the last few years, and I feel as if um, several of you know how much I love Montgomery County Parks. I spend so much time hiking. I'm appreciative of being able to volunteer. I've been volunteering for 10 years in the parks, doing various things to help preserve natural resources and also to um, augment several playground refurbishment projects. Um, over the last few weeks, I've been especially grateful and I want to say especially uh, to you all, thank you for everything that was done to expand our ability to be able to walk in Sligo Creek Park and along Beach Drive by closing down some roads and for the cars and opening up to people who are on foot or on bikes. It's made a big difference to those of us who really um, do use those parks for exercise and it's given us the ability, those of us who live in urban areas, to social distance more. Seeing how many people are out there in the last few days um, as the roads have been closed and hearing how grateful people are really highlights to me the importance of parks in our community. Um, I think so many people here care about the parks and they are um, second only to schools in terms of what draws people to want to live here and one of the amenities people always talk about, how beautiful it is, how green it is, and how many parks there are. We need to make sure that those parks have enough funding. And um, I especially think that in a post-COVID world, as we move ahead, after the virus passes, we are going to be looking at a very different economic reality. The parks are one of the best investments I think we can make in the community, in the entire community, because they're they are used by everyone. Parks are a fantastically equitable resource in that they are free. We can go and use them. People who have very little money can get the refreshment they need in terms of physical exercise, mental health adjustment, um, and just the ability to get outside and be with their families. I see so many people in my neighborhood using parks for barbecues and birthday parties when we're not during COVID times. And they would, many of those people live in apartments would have no other place to have those family celebrations. Parks mean a lot to everyone here, the rich, the poor, no matter where you come from, being able to spend it in a tree means a lot. We need um, it's a simple you. message and that's it. Okay. And I'm <laughs> happy to talk to you all later. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Jean Didwitty. and the County Council for that. I want to thank, sorry, I just got the message, I'm unmuted. Um, I want to thank you for the strong support you've provided over the years to the older adults in Montgomery County. The COVID-19 public health emergency is placing extraordinary financial and emotional pressures on the county, and we thank the Council for the actions that you have already taken to provide COVID-19 relief. We recognize that going forward, revenues are likely to be severely contracted. Expenses will be increased, as will the need for government assistance. Our FY21 budget priorities were set prior to the crisis, and our written testimony includes those priorities. However, in our current reality, we are asking 
only for the addition of three social worker positions in HHS, one in adult protective services, one in the public guardianship program, and one in adult foster care. In these difficult times, vulnerable older adults may be even more isolated. And the potential for abuse, neglect, and exploitation, including financial exploitation, increases. And these state-mandated programs must be adequately staffed to meet the need. So as you proceed with these challenging budget decisions, we urge you to support the critical programs that permit all older adults to live safely in their homes and communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nathan Ackerman, please. Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Council, and uh, thank you to the community for this opportunity to speak to you all. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Hopefully you can. We can. Um, but I have to bring about some concerns that I have for the community here. I live in Bethesda, Maryland, Wildwood Manor, and I have, I have first and foremost some concerns about the Consumer Protection Bureau of Montgomery County because I have um, seek assistance with a consumer complaint, and um, this consumer complaint, it was not uh, handled properly, and it took a year for uh, a conciliation-like matter to be um, decided uh, when I proved a lot of facts about this complaint um, to which I should have prevailed. But um, nonetheless, it was not given to me. It was given to uh, Capital One, a bank that I am a customer of. And uh, I had a check that was sent to an address that I did not request it to be sent to. And um, yes, I have concerns about security and well-being and also other things in my community that have, ha have happened are um, some robberies in my uh, neighborhood. And I have heard of houses being robbed with ch uh, children in them. Um, I have also heard uh, sounds that are like gunshots in my, um, just outside my house, because I live right next to uh, Balducci's in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. So there's, there's a large parking lot and the shopping center everywhere there. Um, so I have concerns about safety and well-being as well. Um, I am concerned about the funding. It is not going to the pro proper places and the proper people, um, the people that are chosen to represent Sir, we need you county. to wrap up, please. We need you to wrap up, please. Yes, uh, I'm concerned that the people representing this county are not uh, doing so properly. So I would just request funding to be re redirected for that. I'm not requesting funding for any organization or anything like that. Okay. But I'm requesting different okay. management. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have Vanessa Pierre. President Katz. Good evening, Council President Katz, Vice President Hucker, and Council members. My name is Vanessa Pierre, and I am a resident of the White Oak community. I'm here today to secure financial support for the establishment of a farmer's market in White Oak. I moved here in 2016, eager to begin a new life with my three children. It wasn't easy, but our decision to become a part of this great community never wavered until recently. Recently, our decisions have become less about planning our new life and more about basic survival. What used to be as simple as planning the weekend activities have become a question on whether to pay the rent, put gas in the car, or buy groceries. After everything is paid and we've evaded eviction another month, a new question emerges. How do we make $50 last two weeks for a family of four? Fresh and healthy foods are no longer an option. Chips are cheaper than apples. 
Your work through the 2017 Food Security Plan to address access and availability is commendable, and that forward thinking is part of the reason I love it here. But we can do more. While only 6.1% of the county's residents are food insecure, 20% of the 6,000 plus residents in White Oak are food insecure. This issue requires immediate concentrated action. Transportation is the number one concern for White Oak residents. High Price Giant is the nearest grocery store. And the closest farmer's market is in downtown Silver Spring. A farmer's market will bring the goals of that 2017 initiative to the residents that need it most not to mention other benefits such as the federal uh, SNAP market match program that will double the amount of produce families can buy, the flexibility to have pop-up locations, and the bonus of supporting our 540 county farms. It is my hope that you will be inspired to support the establishment of this new farmer's market so that together we can heal our community from the inside out, one healthy meal at a time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our last speaker of the evening is Pia Morrison. President Katz. Hello, President Katz, Vice President Hucker, and members of the Montgomery County Council. My name is Pia Morrison, president of SEIU Local 500. Before I begin, Um, before I begin, I would like to thank you for your leadership during this unprecedented crisis. A leader's true character is revealed in times of adversity, and I'm sure I speak for all of Montgomery County when I say that we're fortunate to have leaders of great and enduring character in these times. As you know, I am here to speak on behalf of the thousands of support staff at Montgomery County Public Schools and the adjunct faculty of Montgomery College. These brave women and men not only educate, feed, and transport our children, but they have been on the front lines fighting COVID-19 and caring for our community during this pandemic. MCPS support staff have left the safety of their homes and families and reported to our county shuttered schools. They've delivered essential technology to children learning from home. They've made meals available to families in need. They continue to provide instructions to students from home, and they've disinfected our school systems building, even with scarce equipment and hurried training. Not one of these brave souls reported to work for a bonus. They did it because it was their duty, because they're invested in our community and our children. Adjunct faculty, like so many educators, have worked overtime during this crisis, learning new technology and new teaching methods to continue their students' education remotely. When campus is closed, their workloads only increased. Adjuncts and MCPS support staff realized that while they have endured hardships, many others have lost a great deal. They know what's happening in our county better than anyone. That's why today I ask that you fund Montgomery County's public schools at the maintenance of effort level at a minimum and continue to fund Montgomery College. It's not just the right thing to do for our hardworking support staff and adjunct faculty, but critical to the county's recovery following this pandemic. After all, county schools will need to be ready to reopen with appropriate resources for student success in what will be our new normal. The only additional thing I would ask for on behalf of some of our county's heroes is that the school system be reimbursed for expenses it has incurred as a result of this pandemic. County schools should be compensated for outlays for PPE equipment, distance learning expenses, in addition to any other expenses related to the COVID-19 crisis. As federal, Please wrap it up. as federal stimulus funds are made available, our frontline workers and school system can and should be made whole. Um, I want to say that much. if someone, thank, thank you, very you so much, much. For, for out of take time. care. Yeah. Thank Bye -bye. you. President Katz, that wraps up our speakers for this evening. Thank you very much, Susan. You did a wonderful job. And uh, Councilmember Navarro, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to say that, you know, of all the years that I've been on the council, there are there are certain moments that really stand out and I think will always stand out. Tonight is one of those. Uh, here we are in the middle of this extraordinary crisis where each and every one of us is dealing with a lot of anxiety and a lot of uncertainty. And, um, you know, to, to hear all of these residents come and all these leaders come and share 
um, their, their concerns and also advocate on behalf of so many others really fills my heart. Uh, and in particular, I want to say that, you know, when I hear all these uh, moms, all these immigrant moms that are not English dominant and are taking the time and have the courage to come and testify during these times, when we all know that, um, you know, immigrants have it kind of tough these days, um, I just want to thank them from the bottom of my heart and commend them for what they're doing, because it's not just about their own personal concern, it's about a community. And this is how we're going to get out of this pandemic as a better county. It is with that spirit of being here for the community. Um, so I just want to thank everybody who took the time to call in. This is a historic moment because we've never done this this way. I want to commend Council President Katz and my colleagues um, for everything that, you know, all of us are holding hands, trying to do what we can. Um, but just say how proud I am and had to go off there for a second, got, got a little emotional um, because the, that amazing spirit of resiliency and, and positive attitude that our residents bring is just what makes this county so amazing. So thank you. Thank you. I think it should be noted that we're theoretically holding hands. We're not holding hands in practice. We're six feet apart. That's at least in this case. Uh, Council Member Rice. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And I just wanted to thank uh, SEIU, one of our great uh, unions, who has already stepped up to the plate. As I mentioned earlier in my conversations with Dr. Smith and our school system, a largest part of our budget, uh, who do understand the fact of these incredible times we find ourselves in, who understands that we may not be able to do the advances that we'd like to be able to do, that we know we need to do uh, to support our students. But right now, we have something that's taking the lead, which is dealing with this pandemic. Once that ends, we will get back to business in terms of making sure our school system is stronger, making sure we're addressing our achievement, equity, and opportunity gaps. But I really just want to say thank you uh, because Ms. Morrison and, 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 and um, uh, SEIU represent exactly what we need. Uh, folks who understand and want to be team players, folks who understand that this is a time in which we've got to shore up what we've got and then once we get ourselves back on track, we can talk about expansion. And so I just really want to say thank you. And for the myriad of people who testified and said the same thing, that's what's important. Um, folks don't understand. We just had a run of $20 million to try and help small businesses that went out of the door in hours, hours in one day. And we still have people who are talking about they're going to apply today and tomorrow for this fund. And those funds are most likely already expended and spoken for. That's, that's the reality of where we are right now. And so from that perspective, I just hope folks take a step back after this evening and really understand where we are and the hard times that we're gonna be facing and the hard decisions we're gonna to have to make. So thanks to my school system and my folks who are working hard each and every day, putting themselves in harm's way and being out there to make sure that they're feeding our kids, that they're educating our kids and taking care of our community. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Council member Friedson. Yeah, just very quickly. I, I've said before, I think times of crisis are moments of character and to the points that were made by council member Navarro and council member Rice. I think our community is really demonstrating that character. And this council is trying our best to reflect the character that you all are showing uh, in the various capacities that you are. Uh, and I also just wanted to add to the uh, chorus of thank yous to the staff. I, said it as the call ended uh, earlier. I wanted to say it more publicly, but uh, really has been uh, extraordinary to see how our staff has stepped up to provide this opportunity for people to testify in extraordinary circumstances to make sure that uh, while we limit our presence at the council, that we're not limiting participation. And uh, I actually think that, um, you know, the written testimony and videos in particular, those that weren't testifying right here in this moment, uh, that I've gone through so far, and I know all of our colleagues have uh, as well. I think that we've, uh, in this time of desperation, have shown a model uh, to be able to take the best of these uh, moments in this time of crisis to have a better way to provide greater opportunities for more residents to participate in the process moving forward. And so I think there are some real silver linings here. Uh, we, we never thought we would need to do that. We never thought that we would do that, and we have. We've proven that it can be done. And now we have uh, something that I think we can uh, build off of. And so I just wanted to thank 
uh, the whole staff, Sonia and Michelle and Lillian and Susan and Costas and everybody else who's been uh, involved in this for, for making this possible. Your hard work is noticed. It's providing a tremendous service to our residents and it's making democracy at the local level work. And so thank you. Thank you, Council Member Glaze. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you know, this has been a long and historic day for the council. Uh, it used to be light outside. There used to be more light among uh, on all of our faces. And if you look at the screen, clearly uh, almost 12 hours later, here we are. Uh, council member Friedson shared the sentiment I did want to share. Uh, a heartfelt thank you to our entire staff for figuring this out as if there was not enough to be done. Uh, protecting our residents, making sure that they are safe and secure, uh, and oh, as well, making sure democracy is open and transparent by uh, providing online testimony uh, and making sure that these hearings were accessible to everybody. And uh, brava, um, uh, Council Member Navarro, for doing double duty uh, and doing an awesome job at it as well. So uh, congratulations to everybody. I think it's a really important day and uh, I'm proud of everything that we accomplished. Thank you. Thank you very much. As we noted, as we began this hearing, the council will conduct, um, the council will conduct full work, set, will, will conduct work sessions in April and May. And I did wanna take a moment uh, before we do conclude this meeting to uh, have a moment of silence for a, a, uh, a county employee today who passed away because of COVID-19. Uh, I think we should take a moment of silence uh, and, and, uh, and remember him, please. Thank you very much. He and his family are in our hearts and prayers. And with that, we are going to conclude this uh, public hearing and this uh, meeting. And we will be back uh, for another meeting uh, in this type of forum on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Good night.